Hi everybody, Jo here again. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our crafty catch up. And today I thought we'd have a little look at um, a technique called spotlighting. Now, it's an old technique. Um, we've been using it for years in the craft industry, but I do think it's good as a seasoned crafter to go back and revisit older techniques. But also I'm aware that we've got a lot of lovely new followers at, here at Lavinia. And so I just wanted to give you a little bit of inspiration on something that you may have not met before. You may have seen it and not known what it is. But as I say, if you're a seasoned crafter, I've just put my twist on it because um, it's nice to do that. I love to look for techniques that other people use, but put my own twist on it. Um, and as I say, this one's been around since, well, when card making started. So spotlighting, this is the card I've come up with, is just a way of highlighting an area. And normally you would just, um, quite often you could use a die cut and actually decoupage the area that you're highlighting. But I thought we'd use our circle masks and this is all flat. As you can see, the card is flat and we'd make it just look like we'd almost die cut. And the twist here, um, I thought we'd leave the whole of our area just monochromatic in black and white and we would just add colour to our spotlighted area. Now I'm using some of our fabulous new stamps plus some good old favourites because it's lovely to mix and match because that's what we do. We've got one of our lovely sentiment stickers here and as always I've decorated the envelope. And I have to say, I'm so chuffed to see that so many people are now decorating their envelopes. Honestly, that makes me happy. I had to post a card the other day and at the post office, um, it was a large one, so I needed a, a large envelope. And um, Sandra behind the counter, she said, oh, I know this is one of yours. She said, look, that lovely decorated envelope. And it made a smile. And I said, well, I'd do it. I said, hopefully it might make the postman smile and hopefully the recipient too. So... It is lovely to see that. Now I've gone for a DL card, a slimline card, just because I think they're very elegant and I think it works well for, as you know, I know I've got a bit of a thing about meadow scenes, but again, we all have our things, don't we? Now to start off with, I've got a piece of card. Now I'm using the multifarious, but it's not the white card this. It's, I can't remember if it's called cream or ivory, but it's beautiful. I just think for a change rather than white. And if you'll notice, I've got cream card blanks and envelopes as well, just because I just thought for a nice change. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my, you know what I'm like, put my Sharpie line round. So I need a piece of kitchen towel. I mean, my hands should be clean. It's the beginning of the day. Here it is anyway when I'm recording this. Now, just let me see. There we go. So, as you know, I like to do this at the beginning just because I can't trust myself to do it at the end. You know, full credit to those clever people that can. I can't, I'm afraid. But again, I think part of crafting is knowing sort of like if there's an area that you're liable to not be as good at as others and actually going with it and finding a way. For me, this just minimises my chance of doing, ruining my card. And I think that's what we do. I want to enjoy this. So I want to make, hopefully, let's move that out of the way. And then... What I'm going to do next is I actually want a black line here. So I'm actually going to use my mat. And with my fine liner pen and a ruler, I just want to draw a line here. And I'm going to put some masking tape here. And the reason, now I've got to be honest, I did try drawing along my masking tape and the masking tape hasn't got enough oomph. So I decided that this was the best way to do it. I always say I do things that may not get a good result just so I can pass the information on to you so you won't do it. Now I'm very, sorry, I forgot to tell you the size of the card, didn't I? Now this is to fit a slim line and for me, the card I use is eight inches by three and three quarters. 
and that just gives me it's not quite I mean it's supposed to be double length isn't it not quite um but that just works the best for me now I want to tape off this area now did you know Lavinia sell low tack tape I know there's been a, a few people asking where to get low tack tape and this is fabulous it is very low tack so all those um ladies that have messaged and said it's torn my card honestly i've been using this one and i haven't had a problem with it and i just want to take it up to that line now my head may come over just because i want to get it perfectly to that line and this is if i show you look on the back it's good to do a quick demo isn't it Right, now I've not put this on my clothes or anything like you can do to reduce the tack and I'll press it down, look. But then if I come to lift it off, look at that, no problem at all. It is just fabulous stuff. So as I say, when you put your order in for Lavinia, remember your low tack tape. So we'll start with some stamping. And in... The way I work in my head, <laughs> which, you know, isn't that good a place. It, it's a weird place. I'm thinking I want my spotlight here. So my sort of focus stamp, I want to make sure. You see, one of my favourites, and I know I shouldn't have favourites, is the open dandelion. So I want to make sure I've got one of those in my spot area where I'm going to have my spotlight. So I shall do that one first. Now, as always, I've just got to turn it sideways. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I'm just going to stamp this maybe two, maybe three times. I want a full meadow, but I still want it to look nice. So <laughs> that's the trick. So we'll have this one sort of here. So how are you keeping anyway? I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're having a good week. Oh, that's beautiful. So I think we'll just have one more of those. And we'll pop that over here and just change the angle. There we go. And as always, I'm afraid I'm just giving that a bit of a wipe off camera. I know I could leave it to the end to clean all my stamps, but... I've just got more chance of getting ink on my fingers and then ink on my card. So you know me. Now remember you can bend the stems on these. So I'm just going to put the little, like the board, at an angle. Um, where should we pop that there? And then let's have one here. And then just twist it the other way. I don't want to twist it much. So I'm trying not to get ink on my fingers. And we'll pop this one here. And again, give that a quick wipe. And then the next one, let's add the tall dandelion. Because if we've got some open ones, we'll have some tall ones, won't we? Now, do I want that with it or should we have it just? I think it would look nice here. I'm not copying my original design at all i've got to be honest i find it very hard to copy something exactly and also i'm one of those crafters i don't know about you i almost get a bit bored doing the same thing i don't know what that says about me but um i do i mean i think you know it's great if you can do the same thing it's a bit like if i do batch card making i have to almost break it up I find it hard sort of being very repetitive. Now I want to add some. This is one of my long-term 
real, real favourites, Wildflower. And I just think it goes well here because it's a solid stamp, a silhouette. It gives me some, almost some solid stamping, whereas these are quite, got a lot of open areas. And if you're not sure with this being, I'll tell you what, I'll turn it around the proper way. If you're not sure where to put this, with it being a solid stamp, just again, use your acetate and have a look. And it'll just give you an idea. It almost just, I'm going to use it to add sort of a little bit of drama. And I think a design like this needs this. And it's amazing the difference sometimes just by adding one particular stamp that it can make to a design. I'm thinking I'll add one here. And I'll just do a second generation behind. And this I'm going to put in clumps. I'm going to put one there and a second generation. I'm going to put another solid one there and a second. Now, it just doesn't look quite balanced to me. So I need a little bit over here, but I don't want to put it at the same height. So that looks nice. Now this looks odd. I need just a second generation there. Don't ask me why, but I do. So let's just get rid of first generation there. It's only a little, but you see to me, that makes all the difference. Can you see? I just think that looks better there. So I'm happy with that. Again, quick wipe of this one. Now I want to add to my other, the wild summer flowers this time. And I've got a block somewhere. Now with this, I want to use this for a bit of height just at the top. So what I'm going to do is just ink up the top. I'm not going to ink up the stem because I almost don't want the stem. You know, sometimes almost when flowers look like they're just floating at the top and I don't want a harsh stem. So I'm thinking here, just, this is such a light stamp look that you can almost put it so it looks like it's behind and I don't have to discard that stem there. So it's so lovely for that. It adds height. But I think with it being one of those um, almost wispy florals, it looks nice with just the... Um, well, that's pretty. It just looks like it's sort of in the wind behind. And obviously that's what happens with a meadow. You get the grasses, don't you? And they just, they do sort of just go in, in the wind. That's pretty. Just one more. Again, I don't want to overdo it. Just, just there. So can you see? And what's lovely is I love that shape. Because again, we don't want them all straight upright looking like they've grown. Because they don't all grow to the same height, do they? And then just to finish off, to go in any little spaces, I've got the orchard grass just for down here, just to fill in it. And this is so light and wispy. And again, I'm doing this in black. It's all in black, all in the nocturne. And this is perfect for just filling in at the base. Again, first, second, third generation. That'll help with your depth. And here. Like I say, one of these cards, you don't want to overcook it, but you want it to look like a lovely meadow. Now, I think, do we leave that or do we add the, hmm, the grass? No, I'm going to leave that. I like that. I do this. I talk to myself. Do you? So, again, we'll give that a wipe. Now, obviously, I've used VersaFine Clair and it's a slower drying ink. So, we just need to make sure that that will give it a good blot. And especially on your low tack tape, your ink will stay wetter longer. 
And the last thing you want to do, especially the next bit, is smudge anything or spoil anything. So there's a bit come off, not much. But we'll get rid of that. So what I am going to do is, and I often say this, this is belt and braces. <clears throat> I say I often say it. I don't know, my throat does play up at times. I do apologise. So <clears throat> I have... I'm a bit overcautious, as you know, but I really don't want this to smudge. So I'm just going to come in with my heat tool. But also, this low-tack tape doesn't need it. But if you're at all worried about your low-tack tape, just pop your heat tool over it. Because the heat will help to melt the, the um, glue. It's great if you have any sticky labels on them, anything that you want to get off. As long as it's not something that's going to melt, obviously. But it literally just means then, so we can get rid of that. Now this, I think, makes a beautiful card in itself. And if should you wish or need a um, sympathy card, a condolence card, or even just somebody's having a hard time, I think that is just a beautiful card. So what I always love to show you is designs that can be left at this level if you want or we can take it and do the little bit of spotlighting and for that we're going to come in with our acetate circle masks and what I want is I want the inner and the outer of the same I'm going to decide, and I find it easier using this one to give me an idea. And I'm thinking that looks beautiful there. I really love that. I didn't plan that to have the two, but I think that's perfect. So again, with my fine liner, I'm just going to very carefully. Now, obviously, you can draw the circle freehand if you wish. I just find it easier using the mask. There we go. So that gives me, and also I love it because it goes with the black lines. So we've got a bit of a theme going on here. And I like to have that, that almost continuity. And we'll come in with the circle mask now and pop it over the top and we're going to use our element sink pads and our graphite and one of these gorgeous diddy number no. three brushes fabulous for this and what we'll do is dab our ink and take it off in the lid like we always do and i have to say i've had so many messages off crafters saying how this has really helped them how they use less ink now and also they've less chance of putting marks on the work Always oh, start at the bottom because the bottom is where we need more shadow anyway. So ink off on the circle mask and then just gently flick and it'll give you an idea. So I can see we haven't got that much ink here, so that's good. So I can then come in and go all the way around. Again, I don't want to go far. I just want to have a little illusion. You know, don't go swiping. We're not doing... Sort of like where we're making it look like the moon and we're adding sky. We just want to add almost a bit of shade, which is why we're using the grey. So just keep going back in the lid, picking a little bit more up. And again, as you're doing this, you'll be able to see, you'll get an idea of how much grey you've got. And when I'm happy, I'm sort of just going round and I'm hardly putting any pressure on my brush. It's very gently, gently. And I'm coming to the base, so I know I want a bit more colour here. So I can afford to just come a bit further out. And almost press a, a wee bit harder. Just I want to start creating that 3D illusion. If I take that away, there we go. So can you see? That just starts to help to create that 3D, that lovely illusion. But again, it's all about gently, gently. And again, remember, give that a wipe before we put that away. And what we'll do now is we'll add some colour. So I'm going to come in with my watercolour pencils. Let's get a little bit of space. And I'm going to come in, we've got a gorgeous, there's a light blue here and I love this blue. 
And then there's a couple of purples. Do I want a yellow? And this lovely green. I may go back and choose more. But these are the ones to start off with. And as you know, I like to hold them in my hand. So I'm thinking for the dandelion. I just want to put some purple at the base. And I'm going away from, I know I always do tend to do these oranges and um, yellows, don't I? Maybe a bit of green. So I thought we'd go and add some purple tones and blue tones today, just because we can. So that's where I want my purple. Then I'm going to come in with my blue next. And again, because these are watercolour, they're going to react with water. So I'm not being over, I'm not colouring each petal specifically. And I want to come in with the, the lighter blue. And when I do the lighter blue, I just go over the whole lot, almost to blend it a little. I know we're going to use the water to blend. I just want to lean on kitchen roll here. Just in case I've got anything on my hand, I'll put a bit of blue there. And again, just blend. And then with my green, I actually just want to add almost a, a hint of colour around. Now make sure, now the one thing to remember here, ladies, is so funny. Do make sure you don't go outside. One of the reasons I draw the circle to start off with is I love colouring so much and it does take me away to another place. I don't know about you, I'm liable to carry on and colour the whole lot because that is me so if you're like that it's a good job we've drawn the circle because I only want to colour what's in that circle now I do need there's a gorgeous pink in here and there's a little bit of this and I know this is a silhouette but I'm just going to add sort of edge it where it just pokes into the design here with pink and then that just brings in lovely little pink tones. And then round the whole of my design, just going to add a little bit of yellow. Almost to give me some contrast. Because obviously I've got that grey on the outside, haven't I? I'm just going to come in with a little bit of yellow. Not a great deal. There we go. Now, I'm afraid I am one of those people, and bear with me, I have to put these back in the right place. Because that is me, and that is what I am like. And there are a few people watching this who will know, <laughs> who've borrowed my pencils, who will know what I'm like. Now, again, I'm going to come in with, as you know, I have my number one, my favourite brush. And I always have it in water. A little tip, make sure your water pot doesn't go above this metal bit because you don't want the water to corrode the wood. And that's why you have metal here. So my water pot isn't full, it's only full to there. That's a little tip. Now I'm just going to add some water here just to activate. And I'll start with the light blue and then come down into the purple and just blend those colours beautifully. And then back in the water pot... And I always clean it because obviously it's got the dark, sort of the purple and I want to come in with the lighter area. Again, just blend. Clean it again. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just, if there's any drips on there, I don't want them to drip on my work. So I just cleaned the barrel. Look at that, you can see it more on there, can't you? Beautiful. I want to make sure my brush is clean. Because I've added a little bit of green here and I just want to activate that just to sort of give an aura and then a bit round the pink and round that yellow just to get rid of any lines and almost look like it's just got a sort of aura around it. Yeah. So if I bring that up, can you see? And that was very quick, nothing, you know, nothing major. But I think that's just a lovely way of adding colour. And again, like I say, very quick. But what I will do is just give it a quick judge with my heat tool. 
and it's great this one because it's for large areas it's not an embossing heat tool it's one to just dry large areas so it's great it doesn't force too much heat so it's perfect for that and a couple of little finishing tricks will come in with our pastel pencils and the black and I have a little nib somewhere but you can use a, a cotton bud and I'm just going to emphasize the shaded area here and again just just in this bottom corner and then just across here Again, I'm just going to add a little bit of shade. I'll just use my finger for that. Oh, look, there's a bit of water there, but never mind. Doesn't matter. You know what I said about dripping the water? But we're going to add a sentiment so it won't be a problem. Now, can you still see? So I've got my beautiful sentiments here. And it's just deciding which one... I do this though I'm like oh come on girl make a decision we're going to go with good times ahead I know I put, no because I put that on the other one you need to see a different one don't you love and light I like that or oh, happiness because happiness is in a meadow for me yes okay right but what I'm thinking is I can put that there look so going to add and again I use my scissors just so I get it straight and I can decide move it round decide where I want it and with my black pen just again to go with the theme I'm going to go round and then again we'll add a little bit more shading in this corner and just along there as though our light source is coming from the the top left so our shade will be bottom right. There we go. Yes, I like that. Right, that goes over there. Put that back. And then I'm just going to add, I've got a, a pink pen here. And just on these little seed heads of these wild summer flowers, just going to add some gel pen. Now again, you can decide. I just find gel pens perfect for, for colouring these. And I'm going for the pink just because I've got that nice purpley tones in the other flowers. And I thought the pink would just enhance it. Want to make sure I've caught them all and again it just adds a bit of brightness to that area and then a little bit of white gel just a couple of highlights wouldn't be right without some highlights would it and some stickles I've got the stardust here now you know my tip with stickles it's a naughty thing it has a bit of wind so we pop it on our mat so it won't spit at my work and then I've got an old um, brush, an old water brush or an old paint brush. And I'm just going to paint my stickles on. And I just find this is easier. It means I can control where it's going to go. But also, it doesn't spit at my work. And to be honest, it puts less on, so it saves it for you. And especially at that Christmas time when we tend to use a lot. But also, it'll dry quicker. Add some on that grass there. And again, I'm making sure I'm only keeping my stickles in the um, spotlighted area. We'll wipe that up there. And I just think, look at that. Isn't it pretty? Now, again, you could do any shape. I mean, you could reverse it if you wanted. You could colour the whole area and leave your spotlighted area in black and white. Another idea, you could actually put your verse mark any clear embossing powder or glossy accents, although you would use a lot of glossy accents, and make a dome. Now that would be beautiful. So maybe clear embossing, maybe a couple of layers. 
but I just think that's so pretty. Now for me, I need some Posca, but again, this is totally up to you. If you're not a Posca fan, you stop. But I just want to add, so give it a good shake. A few little, little Posca splats. Little ones, especially over the silhouette flowers, they'll show up well. But then I'm afraid it's got to be done and I've got to come in. I want a large one just it's in that flick there we go it's good exercise let me put my brush back let me just give this a wipe try and keep it clean and tidy and then if I bring this a bit closer can you see so you've got those beautiful delicate little Posca and then we've got a few large ones now I have to say this makes a beautiful card design like we've done but also for me this one this one's going to go in my journal so if you join me next monday shall we do that zooming in thing thank you to the ladies who said they liked the zooming in thing but i'll do it slowly because i don't want to give you a headache there we go so look at that so i think this would make as i say beautiful card lots of different reasons so pretty but so quick now again i'm thinking could we do a Christmas theme with this? I bet we could, you know, but we could come up with a Christmas design with a spotlight and that would be fun to make, wouldn't it? So here are the two. I'm not sure if I can get them on. There's that one with its lovely envelope. And there's the one we've just made. I need to show you it that way, don't I? And then it looks a bit, bit better. See again, as I say, they're just so different with the ones. This one I've got some peeping out. This one, I quite like that with it all encased. But again, it's only through doing more and more designs you'll get and think, oh, but you see, I like that to have the, the tall dandelion. You could try it with other flowers, other floral stamps. I just think, and again, if your mojo's gone, and I know a few of you have messaged Sylvia, I know you're having problems with your mojo, this would be a perfect card to have a go at, it really would. And honestly, for me, I just enjoy it so much. Now I'm thinking, what other florals have I got? Like I say, Christmas. And it's got me that I want to make some more, and I can't wait to add this one into my journal on Monday. And if any of you have been put off journaling, please don't. Everything we do in the journal is just something that we could do on a card, honestly. And it might even give you hints and tips to new things that you'd not thought of adding to your card making. So, you know, please pop along on Monday and have a, spend a bit of time with me as well. I hope you have a good week. Thank you very much as always for popping in. You take care. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now.